The Modern Medusa Part 1 Betwixt two tapering, sulphur-inflamed spires, A battlement stalked round by stalagmite grey bars, Erupts like a scaffold amidst a dew-spotted grove, Gainst which thrashing crests bow at the feet of its cove. The goblin corbel warns, beware to passing stars, For thou hast cursed my master from birth in this mire, He could turn thee to stone were he seated higher. Alas, no odin orbed I ever espied here, From my perch which I clutch like a vulture whose wings Have been clipped by the winds ere the vampire descends Upon warm-blooded lambs whom virgin peace attends. Virgin blood wraps softly as the caramel sparrow sings In cream-colored flesh tones dreamed behind scaly tears Flows not on skin and drought of human warmth in years. Like a demon painter whose canvas is the world, I color the skies and tar the trees in decay. A pus-hued bubble infects the clouds with every glance, And corpse breath blows the birds in a stinking, sickly dance. A bitter metal sludge sky glows neither night or day, For the sun's rays recoil and the moonbeams would spoil Among my poor poison vapors and leper skin toil. From this frosty plateau, beauty melts and poison die. The rotten fever rot stone sweat as though swamp veined. Yet not a venom winged vermin dares to tread in the marsh where the maggots die from fumes of dread. And though not a blossom of life is ever feigned, still a thistled fog floats like a moat in the sky to protect the neck of nature from my strangling eye. Hail the sailing canyon, the lake, the churning chasm, praise the dead sea diffuse with skeletons burning, which guards like a spike-adorned gorge the far-flung lands of golden apple orchards from my palsied plague hands, nourished on absence, soul-starved bones stave off yearning, when distance is joy's memoir, taste is cruel phantasm, Where colors a mirage, blindness is a blessed spasm. Surveying my surrounding terrace of terrors, I spy once spry ivy entombed like fossils flailing In dust-swollen tendons of an aborted bower Along my stone-faced weeping willow-shaped tower. Faintest touch of my tainted talon makes ailing embrasures split like lightning impaling the air, though intent was tender as the honey-maned mare. Days indifferent to time's thunderous winged march abroad creep like a crippled caterpillar on molten rocks, but a dollop of sunshine stole death from a corner of my grave garden to become my sole mourner. What providence, what power of bold heart unlocks The coffin veil where smothering bat-jaws have gnawed, Such ice only Apollo's pity-drenched tears could thaw. But no, dreaming spectre-filmed Iris must deceive, For though no son of man, I stand before his daughter, A serene Venus bursts like a pearl hurled to swine, as I bow to behold waters black swimming in wine. Doubtless for bronze Adonis she demands slaughter, so a head more horrid than Gorgon shall retrieve, and hence my throbbing heart disease at last relieve. Electric goose pumps rise in grateful awe to peer above this battle-scarred arm the soft soaring tail of rainbow banners and once wrathful seas untamed, that now stand parted in haloed vistas aflame. Hark, stray creature, where flows the long-flown charcoal gale, the plaintive curtain sewn to shield pure aspects so clear, from monstrous sights not fit for madman or seer? 
As though immune to my lance-fanged glacial pleading, sparing no pain, she sped straight past my daggered gaze, like a cloud slicing through trees, a destined union, like a vicar entranced, carrying communion. A sovereign swipe of her hand dissolved the growling haze. Oh, if she but knew the depths that path were leading, no sacrifice is worth the cost of so much bleeding.